So guys, I've had my Tesla Solar and Powerwall system for a few months now, and it has worked perfectly. Anytime I've had a power outage, I really didn't notice until I checked my app and I could see my backup history there. But all these outages were re really just for a few minutes. I did test it on purpose for an extended period of time. I flicked the switch on the Tesla Energy Gateway and I was offline for about 24 hours. Now I made a video documenting all of my experiences there, so I'll link to that at the end of this video. But I've never experienced a real world situation where my grid is totally offline and I have to just be self-sufficient on solar and power wall. And right now it is, what month is it? <laughs> it's April, 2020. Did I just say it was April, 2020? It is November, 2020. That just proves my point how crazy this year has been. <laughs> and it's been a really crazy hurricane season. Like we've gone through all of the named tropical storms and now we're in the Greek alphabet. So tropical storm Ada is coming in my general direction in Southwest Florida and I just wanted to be super prepared. And as I've been thinking of all the ways to be prepared with my Tesla energy system, I wanted to share these tips with you guys, either if you own a system yourself or you're just curious about it and are interested about it in the future. Keep in mind, I have a link to my Tesla referral code in the description below. If you use that, you do get a bonus for using my link as well as myself. The first tip I would have, if you have a impending storm coming, just if you anticipate the power being out, make sure you check your Tesla settings in your app. Change it to backup only mode. There is a really great feature called Stormwatch where it basically automatically keeps your power wall charged to peak capacity in anticipation of the storm. But things happen, like your system may not be tripped for storm watch mode. Say if you're like out of the potential threat of the storm, but you know, you still get wind and rain that could still make a tree fall down and damage a power line. So don't wait for storm watch mode to be activated. Just do it yourself. Put it in backup only mode a few days before the storm comes. It's really not going to hurt you. And if you're like me and you own a Tesla vehicle, there's even a setting in the Tesla app to limit charging from your power wall if it's under a certain percentage. But for me, again, I just wouldn't take the risk. Charge your Tesla up to about 90% before the storm comes and then unplug it. In my opinion, I don't want my vehicle plugged into my house, draining precious power from my power walls when they could be used to power my air condition or my fridge or just something that would increase my quality of life in the home. Keeping your Tesla unplugged for a few days or even a few weeks will not hurt it, trust me. Just don't charge it past 90% because that's bad for your battery if it's sitting long term. And also for your Tesla, make sure you turn off sentry mode, turn off cabin overheat protection. You want to maximize the power in your vehicle and the power wall, so just keep that in mind. We're really planning for the worst case scenario, like we're doing everything we can to really stay off grid for many, 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 many days if possible. Another thing a lot of people don't realize is that if your power goes out, your cell phone also could lose data and you also could lose internet access from your internet service provider in your home. Even if you have power from your power wall, you may not be able to get internet. So what does that mean? That means that you can't go into your Tesla app and access the Tesla servers to see your usage. So how do you check your solar usage and your energy consumption and your power wall? You have to connect to your Tesla energy gateway manually. So this is one of those things where you need to be comfortable with this now before your power goes out, because if your power goes out and you have no internet, you can't look up how to do it. So it's very simple. You just connect to your Tesla energy gateways, Wi-Fi um, access point directly. And then you open up a specific IP address and that allows you to connect to your Tesla Energy Gateway directly, like void of internet, you don't need it, you're just directly connected to it. And that's how you view your um, power wall and solar usage and consumption. I have the Wi-Fi access point saved in my phone and I also have the IP address saved as an icon on my iPhone's home screen. So keep in mind guys, this is what we're connecting to, the Tesla Energy Gateway the box with these two little antenna caps. It's also the box that you use to flip off. That's how you test your system offline. So I basically just stand as close as possible to it for the best signal. 
but you can see TEGEZ2, that's my Tesla Energy Gateway. You just wanna to connect to it. And then I mentioned that I have the favorite saved my home screen. This is the IP address that we talked about. But basically, I am not connected to the internet. I'm just connected to the gateway. And this is how you view it offline. So I can monitor my solar and my home consumption. I can see what's coming from the grid, the solar, and what's going to the house. Of course, if the grid was offline, we would not see that right there. Um, and the reason that my usage is, is extremely high is because my Tesla is still charging from the tip I mentioned earlier, I'm charging up to 90% in, 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 in anticipation of the storm. I definitely encourage you to look into Tesla's documentation on how to do that before the storm comes. If you want to be old school, even print it out or save it to your computer so you have it for offline use. It's really important to remember that you will not have internet and you, if you have trouble with things, you may not be able to access it. Even just keep in mind that you may not have phone access if the cell towers are down. We're thinking worst case scenario, so make sure you really, really are comfortable with your system before power and communication goes out. And in my last video where I talked about being offline for 24 hours, I really just pointed out the power consumption of a lot of my appliances and my air conditioning and charging my Tesla. So again, if you have not tested your system offline for an extended period of time, I would do it now not a few days before the storm comes, but do it you know, when it's guaranteed to have electricity um, because your power wall will not charge from the grid unless storm watch is enabled. So do not get stuck with no power in your power wall just because you are trying to test it last minute. Keep in mind a few big things that use a lot of energy. Um, if you have an electric stove, definitely try to stay away from that. Do not use your dryer or your washer, if you can help it, the dryer will use a lot of energy. Your air conditioning system definitely uses a lot of energy. You can keep it on, but I would keep it way high. Like just plan on being slightly uncomfortable. You can have your AC run, but do not have it a super cool temperature because in my opinion, I would rather the stuff in my fridge and freezer to not spoil than me being slightly uncomfortable. Also keep in mind, you could even sit in your Tesla in the AC, watch movies, stuff like that if you have the data. And I do only have two power walls myself. So if you, you know, you have three, four, five, six, seven, eight power walls, just adjust your consumption to however it makes you comfortable. Me having two, I definitely can't like live like a king when the power's out, but I definitely would live way better than somebody with no backup at all. Something like a hot water heater, like you could certainly take a hot shower um, that's not really that big of an energy drain, but if your power is out for an extended period of time, you could even consider cutting off your hot water heater at your breaker. You know, just start turning off things that you really don't need. Even making a cup of coffee doesn't really hurt too much at the end of the day. Just stay away from your big appliances that use a lot of electricity. And in my previous Powerwall video, a lot of people mentioned to me that I should have a clothesline so if you have something that you can actually dry your clothes on, some type of rack, like that would definitely save power. If the power is off, you have nothing better to do anyway. So wash your clothes in the wash machine, which won't use too much power, and then dry them either on a clothes on outside or if you have some type of indoor rack, you can pick one up just for emergencies if you're really trying to save power. And there's a lot of other tips. Um, just follow all the tips that most normal people would use that don't even have power walls. So charge all of your electronic devices, like your iPad, your phone, your laptop, anything that, that you can use that has its own battery, charge that. Because I know we're kind of really getting to the nitty gritty. Watch something like a movie on an iPad versus your big screen TV. The TV isn't the biggest power drain, but at the end of the day, you watching a 65 inch screen uses way more power than you know like an 11 inch screen. It's all just really trying to make a big difference because again, if your power is off for days and days and days, you can't really predict what type of solar consumption you're going to have. It could be perfectly sunny, perfect, you could be living like a king, but there also could be a time where a hurricane hits and it's super cloudy and overcast and you really just have to like 
live off of the, the power and the power walls and maybe a little bit of sun going through your system. To state the opposite of that, there's actually could be a time where your power walls are completely full, the sun is shining, your house isn't using much power, and the energy will have nowhere to go. Keep in mind, guys, when the grid goes out, you cannot feed power into the grid like normal. If people are working on the electric lines, they could be electrocuted from your solar energy. So that's completely cut off. And if your power walls are completely full, the energy has nowhere to go. So your system turns the inverter off. Your solar is just sitting on your roof, not collecting any energy at all. So at that point, you're wasting potential energy. So if you notice that your system is almost full, definitely at that point, take, take the opportunity to turn on your hot water heater and take a hot shower. If you have a lot of energy, you could take the opportunity to cook on the stove or do some wash with your dryer. Just really keep an eye on it because if the sun's bright and shining one minute, 10 minutes later, it could be gone. And if you're not paying attention, you could suck out a big portion of the energy from your power walls. It, it happened to me when I was um, doing my 24 hour test. So, you know, definitely take advantage of the sun, charge your car, cook, clean, whatever, but keep an eagle eye on it because it can go bad in a hurry. So another thing to be mindful of is knowing how your system operates when your power walls lose power completely. So it's important to realize that your power walls provide power to your inverter to then tell your solar pan panels to collect power. And yeah, it's way more complicated than that. But basically if your power walls go to zero, you can't get any more power. So that's why I really stress that you manage your power consumption. Make sure it doesn't get too low. Now Tesla did think about this. So if your power walls get to a very low state of charge, they will cut off. And then what they will do is schedule to come back online in certain increments when sunlight is out. Now, again, this is one of those things where you should definitely check out Tesla's website to really understand how your system works before your power goes out. So I will link to that as well. It's another really good article. It just explains how the power walls turn off at low power, how they will turn back on to, to look for a source of power from the sun and just basically turn on and off until they finally get some. But then if it gets too low, there are other ways to manually turn your system back on by resetting the gateway, but just simple physics, if it gets too low, you're done and you need a source of power from the grid to jump it back online. The system's intelligent, but just my personal tip to you, really conserve power and don't let it get too low. Your life will be way less stressful. <laughs> And after the storm has passed, if it was a storm big enough to knock out your power, you have to assume that there's gonna be some type of debris outside, fallen trees, pine straw leaves, debris on your roof. What that means is, and we're assuming that your roof isn't damaged, there's probably some debris covering your solar panels. So as soon as it's safe to do so, preferably the next day, I would definitely check out your solar panels, make sure there's nothing blocking them. Because if you have no power from the grid, you want to maximize your power from the sun. And if they're covered with leaves, pine straw, whatever, they're not going to do a good enough job. So make sure you have some type of ladder to get to your roof. I use just a ladder and a leaf blower, and that's perfectly fine. It gets a majority of the pine straw off of my solar panels. There is a little bit that still sticks, but whatever. We're not trying to be perfect. We're just trying to maximize efficiency from our solar panels after a storm when we have no power. Got it? good and if you're in an area where it got hit really badly try to minimize driving around with your tesla if there's no power because for one the superchargers may have no power um, you may not have enough power being produced by your system to charge your tesla and you just want the ability to be able to drive in an emergency not just to joy ride around town looking at storm damage. And plus it's just really stupid and unsafe as well because a lot of the times the lights and the traffic signals are out. So they're treated as four way stop signs. And at least in Florida, people don't know how to drive as it is. And believe me, when the stop light is out, people are just doing whatever they want. Just stay home and enjoy your, your solar and energy system provided by Tesla. That being said, all of those steps that I stated, you don't necessarily have to do. This is just where if you have plenty of time to prepare, 
you're good to go. If your power just went off without warning, as long as you have solar energy powering your power walls, everything will be good and automated. You really don't have to worry about it much. Tesla solar and power wall doesn't necessarily mean you have unlimited energy at your disposal when the grid is down, but it does make your life a lot easier. Just imagine all the people fighting at gas stations to fuel their car, fill up tanks for their generator. You're literally sitting at home while your car and your power walls are charged from the sun. It really is amazing. And I hope a lot more people do start using solar and power wall in the future. I understand the price is pretty expensive right now, but if you have the extra money and you're curious about being green and helping the environment and also preparing for power outages, really take a look at Tesla solar and power wall. Like I said, I have a link to my Tesla referral link in the description below. You get hundred dollars for using it. I get some type of commission as well. And also guys, if you have not watched my video where I posted 24 hours offline with my Tesla Powerwall system, I'll post that here. I'll put another video here, just something random for you. And subscribe to my channel. I head right here. Have a great day, guys. Stay safe. It's been a crazy 2020 in multiple regards. <laughs> Bye.